All right, what's up? Good, everybody. It's your boy Chuck Diesel, the Lone Wolf, and we here with my man. <laughs> what's up? Tell them who you are. Yeah, yeah. My name's Willie J, the artist, y'all. I'm about to say this cute little voice. Literally last night, I was at the AIA collaborative event. It was sick. It was the last event of the year. And a nigga was being... Too tart. Yeah. Extra. I want to say way extra. No, I feel it. Actually, I've been... Like realized it was at the art bar, but yeah. I saw the post before the night started, and I was like, "Oh, it literally goes up the street from where I work." So like, I oh, that's wild. Wow. And I saw it. I was like, "Damn, I was just right next door." <laughs> I, oh, it was lit. Yeah, no, I was say that was. It was fire. Not bad. bad. It was fire. You perform? Yeah. Bad. You yeah. like you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I already know. Yeah. Man. You I do that. You do that one shit. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. You just been rocking steady with that for your performances. Honestly, yes. Yeah, bro, smart move. I like the song you talk. The, the what I'm talking about is uh, I have a song called Anti-Social Extrovert, and it it hits out here, bro. It just slaps. It hits out here. It's real. Yeah, you feel me? Facts. The people feel it. Like, yeah, I love you, but I need my space. Facts. I was like, that's the whole. That's 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 life. Yeah, yeah that's, the whole <laughs> that's thought. literally life. That's the whole thought about being like, and like, and I was going through like a lot during last year. And getting, like that song was off my mixtape. Yeah, um, it's called Growth. Um, and I was going through a lot and thinking about like how I am as a person. It's kind of how I am. Like when I'm out, I'm out. But when I'm like to my, I prefer my space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for real. See the crazy thing, bro. Sometimes for me, even when I'm out, yep, it's like ain't no for real. Yo, I walked in, ah, and I'm still here, but like I'm in the corner <laughs> and I'm watching. <laughs> and you could come say what's up, but like ah, most of the time I'm just right now. I'm trying to, I'm chilling. I'm distant. Like, I'm here with everybody and I'm vibing, but I'm still an introvert. Right now, definitely. So definitely. it's weird to think like you can be both. Yeah, and sometimes you don't control when you switch it on and off. Yeah, it's just like I'm done now. <laughs> it's like you, your people meet are kind of just like it's dies. Just it's done. Yeah, it's done. It's yeah, done. It's yeah. No, I get it. And you gotta learn that meter. Yeah, so you know when to be like, all right, I'm gonna head out. So it's not at the point where people just come up to you and you like shut down already. Yeah. But it's like, ah, nah, I did before I even got to that point. So it was no, what's wrong with him? Or like, right. why are you so quiet? Like, yeah. I'm quiet because I'm quiet, bro. I don't feel like talking no more. Or because I'm tired. So I, I'm done. <laughs> I don't have words. But I, for real. The crazy thing for me is sometimes it's like, it's not even that I'm tired. I yeah. just don't have nothing I feel is important to say. And they, honestly, people just, like a lot of people like just hear they shall talk. So like, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> they do. It's not a bad thing. It's like I could. Can I just sometimes observe? Yeah. I always have to be spilling out. Yeah. No. Right. There's no rule in the human book that says I must always be willing to exput or ex output. Like facts. facts. I meant to be, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, facts. I'm doing my job by being. Facts. Like, facts. Don't ask for more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, man. Let's take a drink. Start this off, and we're on take one for being introverted extroverts. Love it. Go. So it couldn't be called sake Sundays if we have a bottle of sake. That's why it is. Yeah, most of them are. Really? Yeah. Like I was telling you, like I was telling you before we started with the shoot, and I was like, I've been to Japan, and I've never had something. Before. And I think that's wild. Nobody ever like offered it with your dinner. No. Well, well, in the group that I was in, we weren't allowed. To, we weren't allowed to drink. Yeah, that didn't stop a lot of us. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> yeah. Niggas was drinking. So I would say, the one thing about it was. I don't think I, I. They never offered it to me, um, but like one of the things that we would get over in Japan was like this. Uh, it was like a beer. It was like yeah, a, it was called a strong zero. 
That was the was one. all you needed. Everybody, yeah, everybody was drinking them. Everybody was, me personally, I was drinking a little removal sodas that you try to press the little, put the little top down on the thing. Yeah. You know, like, drop some marble into the, it's, it's Oh, but that's not alcoholic, though. No. Nah. Yeah, 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 no, I'm hip. I, I had yeah. one today, but it was uh, one of the big bottles. Really? And it doesn't have the button. Really? Yeah. Huh. I went to the, uh, what is it, Comic-Con convention? Uh, yeah, it's not Comic-Con, it's not the whole yeah, <laughs> but it's a convention for yeah, it. Yeah, so they had those. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna say those. Those are so far. Like the mellow ones, tops. Not a strain. Tops. Oh, here, let's pour another. What like that you have? Had it before, but uh, they're all pretty light for the most part, and the alcohol percentage is also pretty light. I haven't seen one more than like eighteen, maybe. Yeah. But with with that, it's easy to drink. And usually, if you do get it with dinner, you kill the whole bottle, bro. Huh? Yeah. I feel like it's not, so, so I feel like I should say eat the I don't know why. What does that mean? I think it's like thank you for the meal, and then like oh. when you're done, when you're done eating, you say go to your stomach. That's kind. Yeah. 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 That's like a, I don't know what that means though. <laughs> I just learned that I needed to be polite. That was hey. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I said it. Yeah. No, yeah, that was something that was like when we first went over there. That was something that we had a whole talk about. They were like, "Yeah, nah, make sure that you said when you are about to eat, make sure you say this. When you are about to, when you're done eating, make sure you say this." What was it like over there? It was dope. Like yeah. it was one of the dopest experiences I've ever had. What was the dopest thing? Um, I think being able to see like Mount Fuji for like, for me. Person. Like being able to see Mount Fuji. Did you actually like get close? Ish. We were like not close, close. But I know I had friends that actually went to Mount Fuji. Uh, but I like got probably within about a good fifty mile radius. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and you would see that. You could literally see yeah. Mount Fuji. And then seeing like the castle. Um, uh, Shinjuku was dope. Shinjuku. How long were you there? About six weeks. What is she? Shinjuku. Shinjuku. Yeah. Shinjuku. We like we went all across, all around Japan. Cause like the group that I was in, we worked with kids and we traveled and performed. It was it was insane. What did you do with the kids? Taught them, taught them, taught them, taught them singing, like something. music. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Dope. yeah. Were they like receptive? Yeah. yeah. I would say they knew us. Like they knew us. That like we were like celebrities over there. For real? That was it your music? No. I, okay. Okay. I was about to say, bro, that would be lit to be over there like, yeah, so let me tell you about some hey, um, <laughs> Like, this artist right here. And the whole time you're like, yeah, I'm getting them started young, baby. Yeah. Like, no, nah, so we, it was a travel and perform in our school. And uh, so we traveled all across the world. We held, like, workshops. And the workshops would be, like, uh, from, they would range from, like, one day to five days. Um, but in that specific side, we'd be, like, one day to three one day to three days. So, and we would teach, eat, not just kids. We had taught, taught a couple of adult workshops, so that would be cool. Um, but like we would teach them like song and dance and things like that. And they would perform, we were performing and they performed their, uh, like their show yeah. right after us, like the second act. Yeah. And we got to stay with like the home state families, got to stay with like the different Japanese families. It was dope. But was the, what age range? Um, like first grade, on up to all the way to high school yeah high school yeah i was in high school and then I, for the adults like with some older ones that was <laughs> like so like the adults be like 18 to 30 or something odd. how do you get the like opportunity um i was in a group called the young americans yeah and uh like i said we travel all across the world so i wasn't actually actually going to do another tour I was on a tour that we were already doing called South South Tour. So I was already going, I was in Tennessee. Um, and I remember calling the, like, the people who were the head at the time. I was like, yo, I'm not going to do another tour. Like, like, it was, we need you. Yeah, like it was, it, but it was like a volunteer, because it was a voluntary kind of thing. And I'm like, yo, I got, like, my family's struggling out here. So I need, like, I need something. So, Voluntary base. It wasn't. Yeah. Did they have any type of pay? There was no pay. No. I mean, outside of like travel, there was there was 
I mean, travel, we didn't have to pay for the flight to yeah. Sudan. I died that boy. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I wouldn't win. I love you for the opportunity. I appreciate you, but like, but, what? <laughs> but like, like, nah. If you want me, you gonna pay for me. Yeah, like, yeah. like nah. That would have been it for that one. Um, But I was just talking to her. I remember talking to the heads, and I was like, yo, like, my family's struggling, so I need to, like, make money. So that summer was coming up and we have a tour that's called like Jaboyne and Boyne Highlands is in Boyne Highlands, Michigan or Harbor Springs, Michigan. And um, that's a dinner theater. So we make money there, we're making tips and things like that. And they, I ain't gonna lie, they tip money. They nice. Thank you. Where was this? Boyne Highlands, Michigan. All right, Michigan. Okay. Yeah, I was at home. So, <laughs> but uh, then, but before we went there, we would go to Japan. Yeah. And we spent six weeks in Japan. And that's pretty much how I got the chance to go to Japan and actually just experience. Like, one of the wildest experiences I think I had over there was, well, there was two. <laughs> one of them was when I saw, like, two people driving around in Pokemon costumes in, like, go-karts in the street. Yeah. In Shinjuku. Like, this is a city. Right. There's a big ass like, SUV right regulated. next to it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big ass SUV. He's like, right bro, you know you about to get wooed. Like that part. That part. <laughs> and you in these crazy costumes. Yeah. It's not even like you blend in. Yo. And it was just like regular Sunday. I was like, all right, cool. I'll oh, wait for to. What's the craziest thing you saw out there? Craziest thing? Okay. Um, okay. There's two. There's two for that. So. There's one story where <laughs> we stay with we stay with the families of the kids that we work with. Um, so this mom, I'm staying with it's me and another young American. Um, and this young American, he went and he my 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 castmate, he went and took a shower. So we're in the kitchen. The kitchen is probably no bigger than this living room, like honestly smaller from that table to this couch. Okay. Like it's a box. And everything in Japan is built like uh not like outward, it's built uh, up back. Yeah, yeah, because it's small. I hit So it's not a lot of room in this kitchen. They don't grill outside, they grill inside. So we're cooking and I have a homestead brother who's like eleven and uh he wants to show us like how the flame looks when the meat hits it. So the mom turned off the light. He put the meat. <laughs> you know what? The mom. We can still see. We can still see. But like the mom turned off the light. He put. They put. They started putting some of the meat on there, and it started flaming blue. But like you know, when grease dripped down into a flame. And, you know what I'm saying? And the mom got freaked out. Poured water on the grease flame. Mind you, this is an electric. Fucking grill, bro. So pour water on the grease flame from the electric grill. Because it's still on. It's still fucked up. Just, <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> then, then she let out this damn cockatoo that they had. Why did she let the bird out? I told, she was trying. I guess she was trying to take it out the room. She was trying to take oh. it out the room. But when she opened that motherfucking bird cage, the bird took off flying around the ceiling. So we got this little Japanese lady literally running around Why in the kitchen in the bird? and trying to chase the bird while there's a flame right here. The little, my little homestead brother's just sitting there looking at her. Like, like, cussing, cussing her. It's like, it's my fault. No, he literally cussing her ass out in, in Japanese. The shit was funny as hell. And then she caught it. She tried to put it back in the cage. That motherfucker took off around the ceiling again. She did, did it twice. The next thing you know, we right back at it. At the end of this whole thing, when everything like was set up, the fire was like, yeah, when everything was set up, it was all smoky in the room. My castmate comes out of the bathroom. He looks at me. He's like, what just happened? I was like, bitch, did you not just hear everything? I was in the shower. I was sleeping. Yeah, like, it was a sitcom. It was a sitcom. I just woke up. What happened? She, it was a sitcom. Mm -hmm. I think the, the second thing was, Having to go to an onsen and it's a public bathhouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You seen everything in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Uh, so the look on your face is tragic, brother. Hey, we're gonna take a shot for your troubles. That part, yeah, that nigga said, it. yeah, man, yeah, yeah. It's only it only it, it, it's bad boy. It's, it's, it's shit only gets worse. <laughs> keep going, uh, keep going. So having to go to having to go to what I saying. Um. Okay, nice. Yeah, it is. But I'm gonna go to what I'm um, We're in the second to last town of the tour. And for some odd reason, the home state parents that we were with didn't want like me, the, the us to shower in the shower that they had. For some odd reason. For some odd reason, don't ask me. It's me. Well, look, I'm black. I was about to say, I don't think you know what color he is. Look, 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 I'm black, but I was with a white boy. My cast, like, the cast that I had with me was white. And we ain't had no tattoos or nothing like that. So like that, it's the whole thing. Like, I couldn't shower. I don't know. Like he can shower with me, I know. Yeah. Like she did like they didn't want either one of us. So 30 but was, fuck it. Yeah. But there was a there was an onsen that was like literally down the street. It is like she did the experience. Yeah. Something. Something. So we fucking my home state brother is eleven. I'm twenty three. My castmate is 21. We're going to a public bathhouse. <laughs> we're going, we're going to a public bathhouse. He went too? He went. He, he was over here. Yeah, he took us there. So he's used to it. Yeah. They he's, was like, nah, little nigga, you're not dirty in this shit. Yo, you can take your ass to the public. He took us <laughs> there. He took us there. <laughs> he took us there. We get in there, and the first thing I see is this old Japanese dude just this vigorous doing, doing the Paul Johnson dance, like just swinging. Yeah, no time. Why is he swinging though? Was he just walking? Or he was he walking like, purposefully? Okay, 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 okay. He was like walking out right, to get back, a time. Back, back. I thought you meant he was being action. No, no. But he's just walking. I think he's sitting shit. That's another Tuesday. Wow. And going into that situation, I, again, I'm 23. <laughs> you, my, you learned. He was 21. like, nigga, shit is scary. Shit. I'm my American. You ain't never had a locker room? I guess I still get yeah. hey, I'm Our locker room, our, like, not the head coach, yeah. but his dad used to be head coach. Yeah. So he still came around. So this is like boomer type days, nigga. Uh, that nigga used to be nigga, niggas didn't walk around naked. You feel me? Yo. This nigga would just be no. It was still was, you whatever. You just walk in, you just see this nigga ass cheeks out, drying them bitches. Amen. One let you feel me? It didn't matter when. So Amen. yeah, old niggas they don't give a fuck, bro. I my brain, my American ass brain was on fire because I got I'm ass naked sitting on like this little fucking brick. To wash myself, like little, I'm not bullshitting. I'm first of all, I'm big, so I'm sitting on like this little fucking brick stool to like wash myself. Like, Trying everybody waterfall out. Yeah, is it a spout? Is it a shower head? It was like kind of like a little spout, but like it kind of had the holes like a shower head, but it was like a little spout. Was it just like out the wall? Like yeah, and, like they had like a little wall set up. It wasn't even like and, a uh, shower no. head, like, no. mid level. Like no, it was. What was the pressure, pressure like? Was it at least decent amount of pressure? Yeah, the pressure wasn't that bad. It wasn't bad. The pressure wasn't bad. Yeah, I said the heat wasn't that bad. Either. Yeah, he was nice. I had the steam. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you just had to look at another nigga hit that steam too. It was. <laughs> it was bad, bad. I'm again 23, 21, 11. I'm 23. My American ass brain was going nuts because I'm ass naked. Bathing myself next to this eleven year old with the twenty one year old sitting on the other side of him. For them, cool. For us, bro, I was it. so fucking destroyed. I was like, how? How am I supposed to wash my ass crack? Yo, I, I like, do I just squat up, bro? <laughs> bro. I do I just squat up real quick? I was so shook. I'm like, how the fuck does this? I, I, I that was the wildest experience. I think those two experiences were the wildest experiences for me. Outside of the fact that a motherfucker, we fuck around and we got lost in Kyoto. <laughs> we got lost. Do what? 
me and a, okay, so you remember I was telling you about the story about the lady with the bird. That very same old state brother had to walk us, had to take us, like he, he's 11. So had we have a meeting spot where all the Americans would get dropped off and then we go to the next town. It's leaving day and the mall couldn't take us. He, <laughs> he had to be the one to navigate us, our American asses, through uh through Kyoto to get to where the fuck we were supposed to be. We got it off. It's raining. He eleven. We it's I'm twenty three. This guy that this that that cast made specifically, he probably was like 25, 26. We can't read shit. He can. <laughs> we can't read shit. We can't read Looking shit. Looking at this like hieroglyphics. We had to like see having the I remember we had to get home by ourselves. Like the homestead brother, the most the, the mom came and picked him up and took him home. Me and him, me and my castmate, we had to literally find a way to get, find our way home. So we had to pay attention to what the fuck we was doing that morning in order to get home. Yeah, that was Japan. Wow. Well, Japan. I love Japan. Japan's the reason why I want a bidet in my house. Bad as fuck. Silly. Hey. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I had a bidet at one of my cribs, bro, in hey. Seattle. Hey. I was like, I'm not gonna lie, the first time I went in there, I was like, what the fuck is on the toilet? Then yeah. I went in there again, I'm like, don't wanna try it. Nah. And then I tried it, I was just like, yeah. Let the water hit your ass, people. Not that bad. Let the water hit your just ass. Just a little cold. <laughs> not that bad. Some of y'all niggas don't like to let the water hit your ass. Let the water hit your ass. Look this for it, just so we can see. Let let the water hit it, and that's why I'm gonna say that like bidets like over this either a bidet or a squatty potty. I could never really get with the squatty potty either. Hell no. I tried it like once, bro. It just didn't. It ain't feel right. I'm 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 big, bro. So like I had to brace the fucking wall. Well, they tried to my like the I have no problem stretching like that, yeah. but to sit like that and do something else. I couldn't even think that way. Like, my brain didn't want to think. You feel me? Like, a fucking hole in the brain. It just didn't feel right. Like, <laughs> uh, squatty potty. Literally. It's either a bidet or a squatty potty. Nah. Like, my first time actually having a bidet, actually using a bidet, I thought that the back of it was like the sink. So I'm sitting there trying to wash my head. That's <laughs> different. I don't want that. In the back, that's kind of gross, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's actually kind of gross. I didn't realize it until after I looked at it. I was like, oh, the sink is out the door. I'm yeah. supposed to actually leave this room with this. Yeah. But no, nah, I wanted to say that, like you said, the opportunity to go to Japan yeah. was attached to something that didn't pay. Yeah. You feel me? As an artist, bro, there's so many things that don't pay. Yeah. And like, it's two sides to the coin because it's really easy to say, like, I've trained, I've practiced, I've put in the work, I've rehearsed. Yeah. I don't want to do this for free. Yeah. But sometimes the things that you do for free yeah. open the door up for opportunities oh, yeah. to do things that lead to pay. You yeah. feel me? It's like when I was in Washington, I went to an acting agency. Agency that is bad. Agencies oh. should not make you pay their photographers for stuff or pay them for classes. Mm. I got a waiver on the class. Everybody else was paying. You feel me? Good. Yeah. I had to get my headshots with their photographer. You yeah. feel me? Red flags. Long story short, though, somebody in there referred me to do a free reading, right? I got my first paid acting job yeah. from doing that reading. Right. Somebody saw it, you feel me, and said, hey, you should take this opportunity. And eight months later, somebody else called me in for an audition because they saw my performance and the play I got from that opportunity. Mm. It took my time. In my money, I had to drive there, had to be there. We rehearsed it. We came back a second day. We read it again. We did two different readings. None of it was paid. Mm. A year later, I landed a job that gave me an opportunity. I was working with kids like you, bro, at a yeah. school every day, different school. You feel me? And getting paid for it well. You feel me? Like, not only was I giving back, I was doing what I prepared for, and I got paid well. 
because I took this free opportunity. Yeah. You got to go across the world, bro. Yeah. People die without leaving the city they were born in. Fact. And you got a free opportunity. Yep. Because you took the free opportunity. You gave your time and your talents. It's yeah. a trade-off sometimes. Honestly, like, I wasn't even going to be a Young American. I was actually, because Young American was also college. So I was actually going to go to Western University. I even wanted to go to Western, Michigan, Western Michigan University. Um, I have wanted to go there since I was about 15 years old. And I was in a talent showcase back in like 2013. Uh, shout out Miss Kim. Uh, I love her. I love her. The whole arts family. I love them. Um, but I was in the talent showcase in like 2013. And one of the girls that went there with me, uh, fast forward two years, 2015, she starts posting like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be a young American. Ah. And she's all excited. I'm like, the fuck are we doing? We're friends on Facebook. So I'm like, the fuck is she talking about? What is the young Americans? Let me find out. We look, we look it up. Oh, get to travel. Oh, get to work with kids. Oh, get to... Okay, no. I'm going. I stopped everything I was doing for Western Michigan. Like, I was literally doing my, my fucking... Uh, my uh, freshman orientation everything. I stopped cold turkey. I just decided to go see Young Americans. And honestly, like, the experience I got from Young Americans was one that... I don't think I would trade because of the fact that I got to do so much. I could travel and see so many different, like see different culture. Like I got to see a different culture outside of you know, the, the United States. But then I also got to see culture inside of like these United States, you know what I'm saying? And going to the East Coast, going to the South, you know, get to see how things are done and how that, how different it is from my culture, you know? So, yeah, going based on what you were saying, like sometimes those opportunities that are not unpaid can yield the most outcome or the most fruit, you know what I mean? So like, and then if your shit is dope, specific, specifically, if your shit Somebody dope, will see. Somebody's gonna somebody see. Somebody will recognize. Yeah, and if you're consistent too, like, yeah. A lot of people were just like, yeah, you're dope. Don't get me wrong. Like, you're dope. But, like, at the same time, there's a level of consistency that needs to be had there, too. So, I think a lot of people miss that part. Do you feel like that's something that's missing from, like, a lot of just artists and creatives in general? Is the consistency with the output? Who? If we're talking about mainstream, I would say no. And the reason being is because, like, mainstream is, like, they're putting out. For you sure. got to go more than three months without hearing something. Right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. But we're talking about, like, people who are underground trying to make this shit happen out their own pocket. Yeah. And the reason being is, is because, like, we give a fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> we give a fuck. And then on top of that, we, like, also, like, Coin is a thing. A lot of coin is a thing. And I was about to say, like you said, off their own pocket, bro. Yeah. It's like if you're an indie artist and you're paying for everything and you want your shit to look a certain way and be a certain way, sometimes the cost of it can set you back. Yeah. And I feel like it's something that a lot of people who aren't artists don't always realize. It's like, yo, just for me to make this song cost me a couple hundred dollars. It's like one song could easily be on the cheap side. $200. Two hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and at this point in time, like not to like claim or boast or anything, but like I don't think you make it a song for two hundred dollars. That's the studio time to get the like vocals laid. You feel me? Yeah. And that's just that I still don't own the beat. Right. <laughs> it's it's gonna cost. It's gonna cost either up front or on the back end. Right. It's either gonna cost you up front. It's gonna cost you on the back end. Cause like personally, I know for me, like I have. My own mic. I have like, like I, my phone first EP. My whole first two EPs were made off of my phone. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, or at least they were recorded on my phone. Yeah, and I have the privilege of working with my group mate, my brother. You know what I'm saying. Uh, he goes by apparatus, but like, who's a producer? 
fly ass producer, just like Grammy nominated. Okay. I would say, yeah, but if you can find a team that like wants the wants the same thing, it's it, there's really the sky's the limit, it's just more so like a a a, a matter of time. Yeah. Versus whether or not if yeah. kill it. You see, one thing that I just like I don't try to harp on it, mm-hmm. but like for mainstream artists, their budget, bro, just to break a single, is two hundred thousand. That's crazy. Hundred thousand. It's like to be an indie artist and expect for it to take one piece of content or one song or one video and to break a certain threshold or platform, it's like how why do you think that this is going to be the one? Why do you think that this is going to be, you feel me, the catalyst when there are so many people putting out so much stuff and the people who are successfully doing it are putting exponentially more money behind it. And so it's like, for me, I try not to like tell people, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't put it out. Like, no, drop, be dope, share it. You never know. But at the same time, be smart and pay attention to the actual facts of the matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm definitely a person who's like, and this is something I kind of recently realized, where I'm more art over business. And it's not to say that the business is important because it is. It keeps us safe. It keeps the artist safe. It keeps the art safe. You know what I'm saying? It gets us back. That part. You know what I'm saying? But like, when it comes down to it, like. I remember I just like recently I just saw like where J. Cole was talking about I don't charge people four feet. What charge four feet? What charge like people were thinking like he charged like two thousand dollars per word. And it's like, I don't know, he's like, I don't bet. You know what I'm saying? I do this because I'm inspired by what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? I think like the love of the art is what's going to be the deciding factor for a lot of shit moving forward, especially in like the music industry. You know what I'm saying? So it it's it remember how like back in like July and back in like July everybody was like worried about how hip hop was uh 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 they thought the hip hop was dying. I mean I feel like it started before July. Yeah well yeah DOA definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's been going since then. Yeah. Everybody but like this year for sure, like everybody was like, oh my god, like it was just like oh, hip hop not number one. Yeah, so hip hop yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't personally my thought on that wasn't like it was a bad thing. I was like, it just means to take that it's shift. You know what I'm saying? Like the music that we're getting now, cool as it may be, like it is it's, it's nice and hot, you know what I'm saying? It is like ah, we finna turn up all the time, like no, everybody won't fucking turn off all the time. <laughs> Tell the truth, you know. But it's it's like the the, the 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 culture is shifting around and going a little bit back into the the idea. Or I don't even know if it's called back. I think it's more so just like starting to become like this enmeshed kind of thing where it's like, yeah, we want to turn up, but we also want substance. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's just like part of a business where you're not pushing uh, or you're just not making carbon copies of everything just for the sake of the machine being the machine. Um, But you are still cognizant of the business aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you always have to be aware of what's hot in a sense of like you can't drop something completely I don't want to say left field because I'll drop from left field but you, love you gotta be from left field but familiar mm-hmm. you feel me whereas like part of the artistry is how can I give you something that I know you want mm-hmm. but you're not ready for it or you didn't consciously pick it mm-hmm. but it resonates you feel me it's finding that resonating factor mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing. Like talk about like like to think about Tyler, like Tyler Creator and how he did like 
Cherry Bomb, Flower Boy, Igor. It, it was what he liked, period. And I think, and I remember him saying, like, put, just put the shit out. Because if you like it, that's all that's really going to matter at the end of the day. But then at the end, of, but then also in that same regard, if you like it, there's also people that are just like you that are going to like it. Yeah. Because, like, if you're making music for yourself and for the situation, because that's, I mean, personally, that's what I do. Like, my any music that I drop is going to be a reflection of where I'm at in that moment. No matter what it is, like, if I'm dropping a party track, I felt like doing that that day. If I'm dropping a sex track, well, <laughs> like, well, I felt like beating it down that day. You know what I'm saying? So, it's going to be a reflection of what, of where I am in that moment. And there's going to be somebody that's going to resonate and gravitate toward that. Cause they're going to be like, yeah, you know what? I feel like that. I feel like, yo, this is why I like anti, I think like anti-social extrovert hits so bad, hits so good for people because like so many people are like, yeah, well, no, that's me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like last night when I performed it, you have, I have people coming up and they're like, Hey, yeah, that's 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 just how I like how I am. Like, yeah, I like I like people, but I, I like my straight sick. No, nah, yeah, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like everybody can relate on some basis to that song. Yeah. Just because at a certain level everybody needs their space. So, I think if you're gonna make me if you're gonna do it and you're gonna be like awkward or weird about it, and you're gonna like if you're gonna do something experimental, still make it relatable to you. You know what I'm saying? Like if that's what you are. I think, like, if you're trying to do something experimental and everything like that, like, you can, I, I, well, I don't know, man. Like, I, it feels like, it feels like if you're, if you're just in an experimental phase, like, there's going to be a bunch of people that's going to, there's going to be a group of people that are going to like them. Will it be everybody that's, like, the core? Probably not. Like, yeah, probably. But I mean, is that part of finding, like, your fan base? Yeah. So you don't want to just make you want to make it for somebody. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think that people are people are gonna, people are going to gravitate gravitate to what they relate to anyway. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So. So it's like trying to make it for the people who relate is kind of like yeah. overkill because it's like you're preparing for something twice. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like, all right, bet these people will like it, da, da, da. and then you put it out and be like, all right, did these people like it? And it's like, why didn't you just wait to even think about that until after? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm putting myself through something twice when I could just test it one time and get the results without yeah. trying to make the results in my head. Like, yeah. All right, if I do this like this, and then I, and they'll like this, and then if I do that like that, and these people will like this, and so I have this group of people. It's like, all right, how about I just like do this, and then I do this, and then I see, and now I know a group of people. And I was say Tyler kind of had that same kind of thought where it's like, bro, just. <laughs> Like, he hates when people, he, he was saying, like, in an interview, he hates when people, like, just, like, they drop a hit. Like a teaser. Yeah, and yeah. they fucking, and they, like, it doesn't get, like, a good reception. And so they don't like, put the song they don't out. Put the song out. Yeah. Like, no, put the shit out. Put the shit out. Because there's somebody out there that's, like, yeah. We'll like but it. then on top of that, like, you like it. But if you don't like it enough, then there's no point. Why'd you even do it? Why'd you, why? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why'd you even do it if you didn't like it? I think that's like a that's not just a music thing. I think it's like with everything in life. Like, bro, if you like if your job, if you don't like your job, why are you there? Yeah. Some of y'all had a job right now, you just like, I can't stand this motherfucking job. Rather run my car through this bitch. Why are you there? Why are you there? What let the life do that to you? <laughs> bro. Bro, like some niggas just working at Wendy's right now, nigga. Amen. You feel me? Amen. Sometimes life just do it to a nigga. Amen. It's just a matter of realizing who you are. And, bro, this is something I had to put into perspective. Not everybody wants it. Yeah. You feel me? That's good. Yeah. It's like, because there's some people who work, like, and not to downplay anybody's nine to five, whether you bag in stuff at Kroger Facts. or you work at the Dollar Tree. Nigga, I buy shit from both of them places. 
You feel me? Somebody got to stock them <laughs> shelves. Fact. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, you know. And it's like, for some people, bro, all I want at my core is to feed myself, mm-hmm. go home to my girl, mm-hmm. and know that I did good today. Yeah. That feeds my soul. Yeah. This job, bagging people's groceries, lets me see people. I help people. And then I take my ass back home to my girl. We eat this slap of rib that I bought from Kroger today with my employee discount. Yeah. And I see you tomorrow. And they're happy. Yeah. That's ain't knocking. Yeah. You feel me? You can. It's just I don't I don't I don't gravitate neither. <laughs> he, I can't knock him. He right. He did what he said he wanted to do. Fact. He fed his family, and that nigga smiling. That's like something that Gary Vee would say. Like Gary Vee be like, yeah, I mean, talk about where he knows people that make one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, but they are miserable as a motherfucker. But then there's also those people that make. He you know people that make like fifty. Happy every day. Happy, happy as a motherfucker. Whatever. I, I think like if something like something that should go where you talking about like, yo, whatever uh he was talking to his father where uh what do you uh, like how do you define success? Like, well oh well I think it was something along the lines of like it depends on you. Yeah. Like it's it's different for yeah, it's, it's different for everybody. It looks different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could be, I want to be a dollar. Like, and it's specific, specificity too. Like, I want to be a musician. All right, cool. You play guitar, right? So you succeeded. That part. You learned how to play? You learned how to play? play me? Yeah. What level do you want to play guitar? And I was like, baby, I've been on this path for a minute. Like, I had to ask myself the same shit, and I ain't even got there yet, you feel me? But this is like, I can't be ignorant to, like, the way that the world is, you feel me? Like, we've seen Kanye, like, and how he was painted in the 2010s, 13s, you feel me? Like, being a horrible person and everything. Whereas, like, people were running up to you after a funeral. Like, you feel me? Like, this man's mom died. He just split from his fiance of over eight, ten years. And you have people walking up to you asking for autographs and stuff. And so it's like, she was just saying, it's like, you don't understand once you get to a certain level, people expect you to be on. They want a picture. They want to talk to you. They want to know about this. And you can't take the time off where you was at for this event. You feel me? Like, where's your video? Where's your next shoot showcase? You ain't done a photo shoot and how much time, like, and just like being a person. Mm-hmm. You need space and time to just process it all. And so it's just like, she was just saying, like, do you know what you're asking for? Do you know what you're actually getting into? Do you know what people are expecting from you by becoming this figure? Yeah. Like you're stepping outside of yourself. And that's something I feel like some artists get into and they don't realize, like, <laughs> people aren't going to ask you how your day was yeah. when they want to know about the next song. Yeah. And it's not because they don't care about you, but they don't, they don't process you feel me? Yeah. They don't process you. Yeah. As having talked to your mom today. Ooh, that's you good. feel me? They that's seen good. the pretty nigga, like that's good. with the flashy shit. Yeah. Like they don't process you as the girl who actually has a self esteem disorder because of the mm-hmm. way she was treated growing up and how you feel me? It's like that's nah, good. you the pretty girl who always been slim. And you sing it now, like, we want to talk to her. Not the girl who doesn't even feel comfortable in the room with all these people. Like, mm-hmm. So it's like, that's another reason your song hits so hard, bro. Because it's like, being someone in the spotlight, being someone who's standing on front of the stage in front of people, you must like the attention. You must like talking. How can you not want to talk now? <laughs> right. It's personal. It's like it has nothing to do well, with you. When I'm on stage, it's just it's when I'm on stage, I'm on stage, and that's a whole other that's all that's a whole other person. It's a whole other person. It's a whole other person to me that you're getting. You know what I mean? That people forget the human. People forget the human aspect of being a celebrity, of being a 
uh, just a famous person in general, you know, people forget the human and learn all that shit. And they won't know what to do. You you could not be a famous, like you could be a person that's very wealthy but not famous, but then like they'll want to see like you flex for a reason. Other than just to say that you did it. Does. I mean, people, I think part of what it is, like how you were saying they forget the human aspect of it, Ever. is because they put themselves in your shoes, mm. in a sense, like living vicariously through. Mm. You feel me? Ooh, it's yeah, like you're yeah, doing yeah. the things I wish, you're doing the things I want. If I could freely speak, if I had this, this is what I would say. If I felt like my voice was heard, this is what I would say. And so it's not even so much that they want to separate you from being human, but the part that you are giving them uh, is what they can't express. I'm saying this in quotations through their own humanity. Yeah. This would be otherworldly. You feel me? This yeah. is another type of power I don't feel that I possess. So this person has to be above having those human emotions because you feel me? They're yeah. expressing the parts of me. My human me can't get out. Yeah. It's wild because, like, think about, like, <laughs> I, ooh, what was it? I just, I really just had the whole thought in my head. Damn. Ah! <laughs> Maybe a shot will bring it back. Wait. Little spill. Damn, two little spills. Good thing it's wood. <laughs> Easy one. But question with that, with how much comes with it and like stepping into a public figure position, when did you know you wanted to be a performer? Oh, probably around like the age of like 12, 13. I really didn't start taking music seriously until like 2019 though. Like, I always wanted to sing. Like, at one point, I wanted to be, like, the greatest singer in the world. Like, there was, like, I, I was in competition with everybody. <laughs> like, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I think that's when I realized I wanted to be, like, or at least I got the glimpse of wanting to be that. Because, yeah, what made you what made you want to step into it at 12 or 13? I did, I did my first, like, well... I didn't go to the talent showcase, but like I was in a talent school, so to speak, when I was in junior high. And it was dope hearing about all of the the things that was happening, like, or all the things that could happen, you know. So that kind of like sparked the want to do it even more to whereby when I was 14, I went to another talent showcase. And this one was on a cruise. And we went to Mexico. And uh, I remember being in a pilot all while that was happening. I was in a pilot for that shit. So like, it was like I was getting glimpses of what I was wanting. And I think just that in that moment, in those moments, I realized I was like, yeah, no, I want this because like, this is dope. I've always, like, granted, I've always wanted to do more for my family. So, like, that's another big reason, especially you know, when you know that you're, like, a, tal like the, a talented individual inside your family, you know, and you know that you can change it. There's a certain amount of pressure that you put on yourself. And I've always done that, like, ever since I was a kid. Like, when I was, like, 17, like, I wanted, to, like, I actually wanted to be, like, in, like, music videos when I was, like, 17. I wanted to be, like, one of those kids that, like, child star fucking uh, making music videos in high school. You know what I'm saying? And in my little small last town of Baldwin, Baldwin, Michigan, Ottawa, Michigan. You know what I'm saying? So, but I think in the, the those were the moments where I was, like, yeah, no, this is what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. This is the, this is what I want to do. Cause at first, my first love was football. First love was football. I wanted to be like Jerome Bettis. <laughs> so, and I wanted to be like Big Boy Moving. You know what I'm saying? Big Boy Running Back. Never got that opportunity. Running Back? Hell no. 
Hell, this is the yeah, I was tackle, tackle, de tackle. Hey, <laughs> what's good? I played next to you. I was a nose tackle. Oh shit! Yeah, nice. Nobody ever guessed that shit, bro. Yo, that's like, wild. What position you play? To see my little ass nigga. I'm like, guess. Hey, yo. lying nigga. Would have never guessed all day, bro. Oh, Think it's like you, yo. bro. Yeah. <laughs> I would have never guessed all but, day. Yo, it's the heart. Why you got to go lie? It's wild. It's like, think about it now. Shit. Back in high school, my boy Popcorn, like, fuck, he was most of Yeah. Day. Yo, sir. Yeah. It's the speed, bro. And I mean, if you were strong, too, like, you, I, I'm decently strong. But at the same time, it was like, nigga, I don't care if you're decently strong. This nigga's 260. <laughs> what is your little ass going to do? Hey, man, I got... When I got to high school, <laughs> look, man, all that, all that, like, I want to go play football for, like, that. I mean, oh, I want to no, play yeah, football. For like, t- yeah, nigga, you I start want, looking. Yeah, man, look, I definitely want to play football still, but, like, all of the dreams got dashed. Bro, you just be like, fast. this nigga big as fuck. Gee, I'm five. And he still run a five? <laughs> like, this nigga ran a four eight? Yeah. Like, this I, nigga 250, he ran a 4.8. I'm all of 5.3. I'm all of 5.3. Probably like, probably like a good, let's see, at 4, well, 14, so probably like a good 240, 285, maybe. But I'm going up against 6.3, 300 something. Bro, nigga, I'm not bro, winning that bro, fucking bro, battle. Bro. Everybody be like, it's yeah. always like, the lowest man wins. It fuck Bruh, me. And so, look, that's how I managed. You feel me? I made it all the way to my senior year, junior, senior year. And, man, I broke my own ankle. Like, fuck. I fractured my ankle, right? And this is the this is the shitty part. I set out a lot of junior year, man. Summer rolls around. Nigga had a contusion on his knee, man. From playing touch football, me and this nigga just ran into each other. Baffle. Crack knees. That's wild. Bro, I couldn't play because I had a bruised bone. Yeah. And so finally, season start, and they're like, ah, we can't play you. You ain't you ain't you ain't play all, all summer. And so I'm like, all right, you feel me? I had to be there, bro. Yeah. The place is the same. Yeah. Nigga, you can. Yeah. It's just you don't feel right because I haven't sweated with the rest of the team. <laughs> <laughs> These niggas is juniors. They'll be fine. Like, they yeah. sophomores. They'll be fine. And I'll run all of them over. You feel me? Yeah. So, nigga, I couldn't play. But they did me a courtesy. We'll let you start. We'll let you start on JV. Nigga, I broke my ankle. <laughs> they fractured my shit. And so, during the healing process, I'm just in my head like, nigga, you don't even weigh 185 pounds. Fuck them. <laughs> this ain't for you. No. This wasn't the long haul anyway. Yo. Like, bro, you know what I did? I joined theater club, drama club, Yo. audio video club, nigga. <laughs> like, I was like, whatever. I'm going to go and do other stuff now. Like, my athleticism <laughs> will still be here. I play sports. I play sports all four years of high school. Like, I play basketball and football. I I wish I'd have stayed in band though. That's the one regret I have though. Like like well, it's a couple of friends I got to my school, but like that's a big one. Uh I wish I'd have stayed in band. Like going when I played football and basketball all four years, but like I came from a small school. Small school, like I lived for the kids. Old school? In high school, period. That's tiny. Like in my graduation class there was fourteen of us. That's tiny. Yeah. I was number eleven. I don't want to. <laughs> oh, but I play I play basketball and football all through all throughout. I didn't really get any any playing time until fucking senior year for football. Um, junior year I got hurt and I was ineligible. Uh, basketball I didn't really get no playing time at all because my coach didn't trust me. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Like you, Bro, you know I who you are. I feel you. Like, but like he did. Like everybody, everybody in the school knew I was decent when it came to like handles. Like I'm a big, yeah. I'm a big man on my hand. Like Escalade, like Escalade got handles. Big boy got handles. So everybody knew. But like him, 
heated, trusted. Yeah. All right, fuck it. So, but I still play. I still want to, like, I want to play ball. Yeah, like the you want to be on the team, you feel me? Yeah, I'm like the who. And I was the hype guy. Like, I was that motherfucker. I was getting everybody amped up. So, but, like, I I was still, I did theater. We didn't, like, have clubs, though. We had, like, theater class. Yeah. We didn't have a club. See, we had an actual drama, like, drama, I guess, club. I should have never been, I should like, we had, it was crazy. Now that I think about it, it's like, when it came to actually putting stuff on, yeah. It was people's dads, bro. That's why. You feel me? Like, motherfuckers' dads would come and bring their garage tool sets, and we would build stuff, bro. We had one, like, two tools. Actually, we had, like, a, uh, we had a woodshop class, so we might have been using stuff from there, bro, but pretty much we used panels of wood, and pretty much everything was built on the panels of wood, bro. Like everything was just built out of panels of wood, and we yeah. would just be cutting two by fours and bigger panels of wood, bro. That was pretty much it. And platforms, yeah, we'd build platforms yeah. and put a piece of wood up on it and paint whatever the background was supposed to be. Yeah. And I guess I don't even know who was painting the stuff because I know it wasn't me, bro. I wasn't making <laughs> doorknobs on these wood panels. Like I don't even beyond me. So yeah, nah. Yeah, yeah, we didn't have like clubs or anything like that. We had like, we had drama class, we had art class. And I guess if you have fourteen students, and hey, hey, man. you only have fourteen parents to draw from. Hey. Twenty eight parents, and if ain't nobody had the time nor the tools, yeah, I'm, my school wasn't that big, but my class was at least three times your school. Yeah, it was probably like four, four something, four sixty, four hundred, a little over. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But that was like, we had one of the biggest graduating class in the last like 20, 30 years. See, we had the, we had the biggest freshman class in a, like that. It was one of the biggest freshman classes. Right. Isn't that crazy? It was only 40 of us. Like, isn't that crazy to think though? Like yeah. you go down in history for having less than a thousand people. Yeah. You just put it in perspective, like I really live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> I... Bro, I saw this tweet. It was like, yo, I didn't realize I went to a small town school until like a certain time of the year rolled around. And I came to school wearing my tractor outfit or some type of shit. And I didn't realize that, that everywhere in America had tractor day. That's what. Well. And I was like, bro, the crazy thing is my school didn't have tractor day. But the city, like, an hour away. These niggas have tractor day. They just pulling up on that John Deere like it's a fucking Rolls Royce. I, yo, it's wild because I think about it like you think about the shit that you didn't have in your school, but like other places did, and you just put it into perspective, bro. Yeah, like I knew these people. <laughs> like, I was this close to being that person. Yeah, and then you just be like, damn, but like. How do the rest of the world even read me? <laughs> like, I also, like, I also I'm like, how the fuck, how do, how do, like, the schools that are bigger do it? Like, God damn, like, I think yeah. I said, I was like, I, like, I'm in Corona, right? So, Corona's attendance right next to it, right next to it. And that school huge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Corona Centennial, or Centennial, I'm going to say Centennial Corona, because the Centennial Corona is huge. Corona High, huge. Like, how do these teachers do it? How do you, how? And, bro, that's another thing, though. They can't. You can't yeah. successfully teach a class of 50 people. Yeah. You put 50 adults in a room they don't, and start explaining subject matter that they're not interested in they don't and they don't understand. They don't get paid enough. You feel me? Teachers don't get paid enough. It's they like, it's, it's impossible. Now you do that with people who don't even have the complete understanding of what it is to give respectful attention. That part. I was say it is not a teacher's job. I'm going to say this to the motherfuckers that got kids. It is not a teacher's job to teach your motherfucking kid how to be respectful. How to not cuss at the teacher. Oh, God. How to say hi, please, and thank you. That part. It is not a teacher's job to have your child out here trying to be training your child in home training. That is no. not your, That is not a teacher's job. The teacher's job. job is to educate and give them words. But if your kid don't even know how to say they're displeased with their words, you can't even begin to teach that person. That part. What the, the fuck? Ah. Stop that shit. But yeah, bro, that's one thing that I kind of slowly been picking up more 
it's just like I've been talking to people. It's weird because like I've met at least four or five people bro, who work in the school system in different like uh, levels. Like one person is actually a teacher and they teach like four or five, six year olds. Somebody else, bro, is a behavioral technician and they're working with like middle school and up elementary school sometimes and you feel me it's just like being in the class setting they said themselves if i were a student in today's class i don't even know how i would begin to learn and i pay attention i don't mind you feel me learning but just the state of the classroom there's 35 people you feel me there are multiple kids who have to have behavioral texts and not because they're slow yep. but their behavior you feel me? They don't have the attention span. They don't have the verbal. They don't have. The, they don't have the emotional intelligence that's built up them. to Why? interact with people. Yeah, yeah they can the learn no problem. For parentals. But like interacting with people is the problem. Yeah. So you put five people who can't even interact with people in the room. Add five people who are helping them to sit down and pay attention. Yeah. With the thirty other people, it's like bro. There's so much going on before I even even looking at my book. So much. Work. How am I learning? And then the subject matter. Why is Christopher Columbus Day still celebrated? No, let's just take a shot for that. I'm still waiting for the answer. Let's take a shot for the fact I don't have an answer to why the day is still celebrated for a nigga who didn't find anything that wasn't already found. And it's been like, that part proven and argued, disputed. Because I even found some shit with people. Will people yeah, feel me? Document, not just people on it, documented people on it. So, yeah, modern education, bro, is something that perplexes me. Definitely. Uh, that's one thing, though, I am glad that I've got to do is work with kids. Because it's like, I don't know, it's just sits sits in a different place than other work. Yeah. Cause I, I guess what it is is if you actually care, you see reflections of yourself yeah. in the younger generation. And it's like, well, what would I have wanted for me? How yeah. can I give that to you? Yeah. And so it's rewarding in that way. Yeah. Definitely. I think like everybody will talk about like will talk shit. They'd be like this generation is just da 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 da. This generation is like all the negatives, right? Y'all forget y'all motherfuckers that raised this generation. That right? part, like y'all forgot. I don't know where you where you missed that train. <laughs> this is but like it was like all the shit that you been doing over the last ten years. They was watching. They was watching. They was watching and heavy. copying. Heavy, heavy on that. So like. Everybody was talking about like how this generation is this that, and the third. But really my idea is just like, nah, bro, really. they need something. They need they have their they're gonna build their own ideology. Um, because they're gonna grow anyway, right? And as like when we are when you're young, you know what I'm saying, you start off like this with your parents, and it's just like as you get older, you completely you wanna start separation, right? You start to form your own ideologies about things. You start to like literally take po- take parts from what you see in the in the outside world, what you see in the media. You start to take all these different parts, and you're like, mm, "This makes sense. Mm, this makes sense." Okay, but it only makes sense to you right now because you're like this young dumb dumb. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes down to it, in that same in that same regard, I think Ray Bernard once said, like his parents grew with him. And if your parents don't grow with you, it becomes a problem because they're not also because like if it's just like you're growing right here, but like you're seeing so much and it's teaching you this and you're only going to go with what makes sense to you. And your parents are like not there. They're there, but they're not there. No, it, it doesn't make sense to them. Right. Yeah. And it's something that it is. Like, this is something that I feel like I had to like real life experience with with my parent, but it was someone in my family who was close to me and an elder. And it's like, they got to a point between us where I just had to leave. You yeah. feel me? Like yeah. leave the situation, leave the relationship pretty much where it's like, I just will 
cut ties because I don't understand what it is that is causing this divide between us. I would love to rectify the situation, you feel me? And so it got to a point where we were on the phone and I just even was asking like, yo, if this rubbed you the wrong way or if this didn't sit right with you or if you perceived something I did or said as being a slight against you, why didn't you bring that to me? Why didn't you say yeah. that I did this or you felt this way or that way? Yeah. And the conclusion was, you're beneath me. I'm your elder. You feel me? Whereas like, I'm older than you. But I'm always right. You feel me? It's like, I'm big and you're small type mentality. Where it's like, I'm belittling myself by even stooping down to the level of explaining my feelings to you. I can't stand that. When it's like, you're the one who's having the feelings and you're putting yourself through turmoil, turmoil yeah. by being upset or feeling a negative disposition. Yeah. I'm literally being, and I'm going to continue doing so. Yeah. Which means you're going to continue suffering and be mad at me for it. Mm. When we both could just come to an understanding of, hey, this is how I feel. And oh, I didn't even know that's what you was looking at. You feel me? Yeah. It's like, you keep spilling water on my fucking carpet. Uh. And it's like, bro, I'm carrying a bucket on my back. I didn't even know I was bending over in a way. Definitely. You feel me? Yeah. Like, let me know I spilled it and I'll stand up like this and I won't spill it again. Yeah. But we can't even begin to keep the carpet dry if you don't want to address the fact that it's wet. Like, yeah. And so that's what I just learned. Like, sometimes you can't even expect someone to grow with you. And like what you were saying about yeah. it's like having a parent who can't parent you. Because the level you're on is beyond what they've grown to. Yeah. It's like you need teaching on level 10 and they're still trying to figure out level 6. Yeah, very seldom. It's very seldom. Like, very seldom they get to the action grow with you. Because some of them get so, they're so stuck in their own way. Yeah. Like, I have a friend back home whose mom is like, I say a lot. Like, I love her. And she knows she, and I ain't gonna say, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna say it, but like, she knows you. But like a mom, just so stuck, just so set in her way, not really wanting to grow, <clears throat> not really wanting to see my friend who is twenty five as as a grown woman. Now, yeah. mind you, it was like you're always, always gonna, gonna be my. Baby. We're never gonna see eye to eye because yeah. my opinion on it isn't gonna be yours because I'm older. Yeah, I'm gonna see it different because I'm older. And I'm all, like, this is the thing, I have a daughter. So, like, I'm always see my daughter as my daughter. Like, you're going to be my baby for sure. Like, yeah, you're going to be my baby even when you're 100. You're going to be my baby. However, at the same time, I understand. Like, I'm going to understand, like, baby, you up or home. Now, when you're 18, on the other hand, I'll be like, if you don't sit your own. Right. It's like, I understand you were an adult, but like, you still ain't rationalizing. Grown, eight. For all you little motherfuckers out there, it's like, I'm sorry, but for all you little motherfuckers out there, it's like, ooh, I'm about to be, I'm 18, I'm about to be 18, I'm going, I'm going, no, no, calm down. Like you're an adult. You're, you're legal. By the law. You are legal. <laughs> you're an adult by the law. But you are only I can punch, punch you. You are only grown sense. Is you law. old enough to get that ass with? Homie, you are only grown <laughs> says the law, you are only legal. 18 is legal, it is not You're not an adult, you're not a grown up. Because you ain't even going to, you going to get to 25 and then see how dumb your ass was when you were 18 years old. Fuck that. You're going to get to 22. Oh, so, like, you are really going to get to, like, in the 20s, you're going to start seeing, like, damn, I was, like, by the time I'm 27, you're going to be like, man, hey, man, I was looking at everything wrong. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. Like, hey, man, it's different. You hit 30, you be like, nigga, I've been a kid for so long. You know? <laughs> I don't think, look, man. <laughs> you like 21, 22, 23. I was still a kid. Yo. Like, it wasn't until I couldn't do the stuff that I had then. And when I finally was like, all right, let me go ahead and hey, man. I can't walk into this interview like this. <laughs> hey, 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 I just said I got to go fill out this paperwork. <laughs> I got to fill out paperwork. It is not for a class. Look, but, hey. look bro. When you 18... It's like, oh yeah, but what would be 
right, you can't tell me what to do. Call, call I'm my own boss. I'm trying to tell you. I ain't got to go home. Ain't nobody going to make me. That part. You right. You right. It's going to get to a point where you wish you was at home. Oh, so, you know, Look, man. Six and you're like, damn, I should have just stayed home. I, <laughs> I, if I could go back five seconds and be like, I'm finna go live back. I just finna go back to high school five seconds. Yeah, I would. I'm not gonna lie to you. Why? Because I had to pay rent. I had to pay no bills for real. Now, there's some of y'all that go, that go through like a lot of life early. Amen. <laughs> hey, y'all do. Like, it's true. Like, there's some like 17 and 16 just going through life early. You feel me? And to those ones, y'all are a whole different breed. Know that, you know what I'm saying, you still can be a kid. You don't have to grow up as fast as you are. You don't have to. Or so much or so much so that where you don't, not so much that you don't have to because you're going to be, in, you're, you're forced in a situation where you have to. But more so it's like the ideology of you can still find ways to be to enjoy your youth and enjoy that time. Cause that's something that my friends like had to do with my whole girl back home. Like having to grow up early and taking care of her siblings and bloody split and all this jazz, like having to be like being the oldest, you know what I'm saying? Growing up way faster than what you wanted to. Not being able to really enjoy those teenage years, not really being able to enjoy that. You can find you can find it and you can take that time, even though it doesn't seem like you can. It's there. You just haven't seen it yet. For real, it's there. Um, but as far as like when you straight up 18 and you just thinking like I'm grown now, yeah, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Because when you hit 22, bro. <laughs> I, being grown is overrated. Fuck it. I'm saying it. Being grown is overrated. Low key. It's overrated. Like, the only thing about being grown that I would not give up is it's being a- able to leave and come and go fucking freedom. as I please. Yeah. And having my own space to do what I want to when it's time for me. Like, turn my music up. The freedom. What I wanted up. You feel me? Have company. What I want company. You feel me? Because, like, being young sometimes is not even just the leisure of having people over. But it's like, yo, she's still in the living room with all the lights on and they watching this TV show hella loud because she got company. I can't do shit about it. I got to go in there and help them with the shit. You feel me? Give me the remote. Like, I, you feel me? So I got to hook up the DVD player so they can watch this movie at 10 o'clock at night. Don't let it freeze. Because then I got to come and fix it. Ah! So those are the two biggest things. I could wake up and be like, I'm not going nowhere today. No one can make me. <laughs> like, that's like that's the beauty of being grown where it's like you just got so much freedom. You have so much freedom. But outside of those two outside things. Outside of that, man, it's over it. It's over now, it. You could you you could have my car go. Hey man, you could have you one about have the renewing the tags. It's not even because I don't want to pay for it. I just forget. Yo, when am I supposed to that. do that again? You could, yo, like, man, I gotta get a new ID. I gotta renew my tags. Okay, bet. <laughs> you could have it all. I gotta go two places outside, and I can't go Monday through Friday because I work, and they only open from ten. Into two on Saturday. I usually go to get my hair cut on Saturday. You can have all that. You gonna have to plan. You can have all that. You can have all that. All Let's right. just talk about how planners in high school didn't help me. He's worth the fuck. In real life. Worth the fuck. Not yeah. worth a damn. You know the crazy thing? I used my planner sometimes, I bro. Use mine. That's what I would use mine and still miss shit. Yeah, no, nah, thank you. Yep. Yeah. But if you use your planner, it probably was written in there, and I looked at it yesterday. The bad boy, like, they always talk about, well, you use your planner. No, bro, like, no. It was never happening. Or I would use it and leave it at home or leave it at school. So when I was looking at what I needed, I didn't have it on me. They just wasted money on planners. Bro, we had to buy them shits. Oh, y'all? Had, uh, we had to pay for our planners, bro. 
It was probably like thirteen dollars every year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. bet. At least in high school, we had to pay for them bitches. When I got to college, though, it was a whole other story. Cause like when I got to college, I wish they would have gave me a planner in college. When I, <laughs> I was like, I got, I had, I had something to prove. I wanted like I wanted to get good grades and shit like that. Like I wanted to actually do decent. And I was you know, at one point when I first got there. I mean, I'm, I'm back to being a student now. I hate shit, but like, nevertheless, uh, you're a student right now. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, ta- I'm, I'm going to full sell for uh, my bachelor's in digital cinematography. All right. Yeah. So, but when I first got to college, I wanted to, I wanted to get like good grades. I wanted to prove to myself that I could pull a decent GPA, and I was in consideration for the bees list. But me not knowing myself at the time, I know myself now well enough to know that when I get to a point to where I felt I'm satisfied, I'll be like, ah, this is I, I, I feel like my spirit animal is an alligator. Like, if you ever notice when an alligator is hungry, when an alligator is hungry, there's not shit that can stop it. Not a motherfucking thing that can stop it. Nothing. But when it's not hungry, it is the most docile animal. I mean, obviously, you don't fuck with it, because it'll show you why it's still an apex predator. But, like, when it's not hungry, it will. They be chilling. They be chilling, for the most part. But lions and tigers, fucking bears, and all that shit, like, them niggas, they, they are on it every day. Every day. You feel like that can apply to just, like, Life as being oh, yeah. an artist, a creative, an entrepreneur. Yeah. Where it's like you got to be on that grind yeah. every day. Where it's like you take two weeks off, three weeks off, and it's like nobody took your spot. Yeah. But you might have missed something. Yeah. Or people missed you. And it's like in that time off, they replaced you. Yeah. It, like, cause I, I still find, like, it's not so much that I get satisfied. I'm never, I like, I'm not satisfied right now with, like, where I'm at with, like, artistry. Like, I'm, like, when my, when my, when I drop my, uh, my mixtape shit, I dropped my mixtape back in, you were here in March, one or two. I dropped that thing. Yeah, I was like, this is the best I've ever done. If I can listen to it now, I was fucking excited. It's November. I'm like, oh, there's so much that I will fix. There's so much that I would just, just fucking fix. I'm like, this is my worst. This is like, like this is the floor right here. You know what I'm saying? But I go through like spells of, I don't want to create, or like I'm not in the mode to create. Or like shit will get over, I like I'll get overstimulated to where it's hard for me to create. You know? So. As far as like the ideology of being an alligator versus being like a tiger or a wolf, yeah, it absolutely applies. Now, granted, that doesn't mean that either or is a bad thing, I don't think. Because, again, when the alligator is hungry, you can't stop it. It's going to get your ass. And if it gets your ass, you got it. <laughs> if it gets you, you got it, brother. You out of there. Go ahead and sign that. Sign that release for into the upper room. You go, you feel me? And but and when it's not, it's a docile creature. But if you fuck with it the right way, it'll show you exactly why it's not to be fucked with. So those are the ones that just need a little bit, a little bit of motivation. I'm kind of that person. First is like a tiger who's like, I'm gonna eat every. Four hours. You feel me? No, yeah. I'm gonna eat every four hours. You know what I'm it has to be clockwork. You know what I'm saying? Both are both can be an advantage because like both both have a and have have an advantage and a disadvantage where it's like the tiger's like you forever trying to eat, like goddamn you ain't never full, my nigga, because like we ain't even got enough. Like we ain't we don't have enough to give you, my boy. Like, God, come out. The alligator, on the other hand, is like, I, right, what you finna do now? You know what I'm saying? It's like a, all there's a there's a sense of like waiting, there's a sense of like gestation. 
But like, both of them are so dangerous when they're at their peak. You know what I mean? So I think like, as an artist, I think it definitely plays a factor. And not just, even, even, in, even in life. Even in life. I think you just gotta figure out which, which, which animal, which beast you finna be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, when you do find it hard to like, uh, I don't say find it hard, but like when you are going to create, like, what's something that helps you? <laughs> um, something that helps me create, I think it's just like wherever I'm at, wherever I am, just tapping into my, like, letting my emotions lead it. You know, if I feel like, sometimes I will, let me just stick to that topic. Uh, <laughs> when it comes down to, what else we create when it's getting hard? Like I let my emotions lead because those are the ones that are going to bring out the most authentic side of me. So I will let my emotions just lead the conversation, you know, and whatever I'm feeling in that moment, that's what's going to come out. Whether it be a rock song or my fucking R&B or what have you. That's what's going to come out. So I just love my emotions leaving. Um, and sometimes, like, it doesn't, it's sometimes not hard, sometimes not hard at all. But, like, when it is, like, those books, it's like, yeah, I'm just going to let my emotions just take over for a second. Yeah. No, I feel like the same for me was like, at this point, I've been making music for so long, whereas like I used to sit down and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna write a song like this," or like, "Oh, I'm gonna write a love song." Yeah. Like, oh, I'm gonna write a song where I'm talking about being fresh, like my outfit so fly. Yeah. And so now it's like, I feel like as a conscious creator, I've sat down with each of the different sides of myself mm -hmm. to try to write them. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, if I sit down with that thought now it feels preconceived and forced. And it's like, I don't want to do that. I want to create authentically yeah. and freely. Yeah. And so I just let the music dictate it. Yeah. And that's the one thing that's beautiful about being a writer in the aspect of someone could give you a little bit of a, like, a nudge in a direction yeah. with the instrumentation. Yeah. And if you're like really sensitive to the music, is like, you're not going to take some soft strings and ambient drums, like you feel me, and start doing a rock song. Yeah. Just because I'm feeling rocky. Yeah. Nah, let me pull this side of me out and address these emotions yeah. that I have had that suit this time. Yeah. Whereas like, as opposed to drawing completely from emotions and painting on the canvas what I'm feeling. Yeah. I'm taking the emotions that I'm receiving from the music. Yeah. And drawing from experiences. Yeah. To try and create a picture together. Yeah. I uh, that makes that makes perfect sense. Especially when you're listening, like if you got a if you got a beat that's already there for you. Yeah. Kind of I was say for me like when I'm when I'm Cause a lot of my shit, like I'll start it off from garage, but I'll make like a skeleton. You produce? Uh, I'll do some of the production. Yeah, after, yeah. yeah, yeah I would yeah. say so. Like I'll, I'll work on it. Like and like an anti session like that's so, like I that song was co produced by me. Yeah, half of my mixtape was co produced by me. Yeah, co produced by me. Like the entirety of it was also produced by apparatus. Like so, whatever I am feeling in that moment will come out in the beat first it's never lyrics first yeah. i don't know i don't know like there are times where i like i have to, like i'll put someone on a recorder or something like that but like most of the time it comes off on the beat first and i feel like that's part of the beauty of being a producer where it's like you help even guide the artist and you feel me whereas like as an like performing artist recording artist and as a writer, songwriter, I can give you words to match this mood, 
But sometimes before I can even give you these words, I need my mood set. You feel me? Yeah. Whereas like, I need something to ground this because if I just write it, it's not going to be a song. I can write these feelings, yeah. but it's not going to have the melody. It's not going to have the cadence. It's not going to, you feel me? Like certain elements that create the song aspect of how I'm feeling won't be there if I don't have this beat that is giving me this timing, this mm. beat that is giving me, the beat is in a C. So I can only sing in something that accompanies this C. You feel yeah. me? Yeah, it's like yeah, you're yeah. giving me the grounding point <clears throat> for even establishing how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like a, a producer is a good conversationalist. Whereas like, instead of oh, just yeah. being like, so tell me, what's new? Yeah. And expecting you to give honest, true openness is like, oh, so I know that you just had this opportunity and you have to make a big choice and decision. Not what did you choose? How do you feel about the choice that you made? And do you think it's the good one? Yeah. So a good conversationalist will give you the ground to say, oh, well, I felt like this about it. And this is what I actually chose. And sometimes I think I should do that. Yeah. Whereas in the songwriting, you'll go through all the ebbs and flows of it started like this and now here I am feeling like that, but this is what the outcome of it is going to have to be as opposed to, I don't even know what I want to say right now because the conversation hasn't started. We're just listening right. and waiting to talk. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I feel like the producer is a good conversationalist because they draw those things out of the artist. That was a little bit, so that's a Rick Rubin, a Rick Rubin thing, like he likes to, his whole thing is bringing out whatever it is that the artist wants to bring out. Now, obviously he's going to add the flair to it. Yeah. You know, and he's going to add his inputs. Of course. But in an artist's life, there's so much clutter <laughs> and especially if you live like if you're an artist and you live in the city like there's no, so no. much because you're still a person hell yeah hell part yeah. of the artist's job is to take those everyday mundane life occurrences and exactly. turn it Something. into yeah exactly for everybody yeah is even R-E-S-P-E-C-T yeah. find out what it means to me yeah. she had to live that you yeah. feel me not getting the respect due in order to give us that timeless jam where people was sack it to me, sack it to me, give me my shit, bro. You yeah. feel me? Like she had to feel that. Give me my respect. Yeah. Yeah. In order to make a bop. Yeah. How much tragedy was in that? Like how many times did she feel disrespected and slighted and downplayed in order to have to sing about it? I can't even talk about this no more. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Can't even talk. I don't got words to talk. That's a kid that stopped playing with me before I turn into a song. Like, stop playing with Once me. Once I put it to the song, I'm turning that song. That's why it's, it's, it's extra strong. I'm taking it to the next level. That part. This is going to be unforgettable. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's there now. In, in grave for life. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, in, in an artist, like, there's, like, so much color. And Rick Rubin tries to, like, take them out of that for for a second to where they can just be like they can create freely right like he has a thing where he wants to create an album he wants to produce fully produce an album that for an art i want to be this person that he does the four too but he, he wants to fully produce an album and never have met the artist but that's his thing he doesn't have a tagline you know what i'm saying like also, I mean, I wouldn't expect Rick Rubin to have a fucking tagline. You up to in age. But like, I wouldn't expect that. You know what I'm saying? But like, he doesn't have a tagline. Like, his whole thought is the is the beauty in absence. Right? So, his thought is, I'm going to remove you from all of this clutter and put you in this space right here. And now you have just free reign. Go at it. And then I'm just gonna add to it. 
little bits here and there. Very simple shit. Is it? Is that the battle? Yeah. I do. Wait a minute. You make yourself coffee. Uh, yeah. I meant to make it when the first guy in there. Oh, how did this get over there? One more time for the one time. Uh-huh. All right. Let's see. So. What's something that you wish you knew sooner as an artist? Um, I think it's something that I'm like still working on. Just consistency and how important it is. Well, it's not so much that I didn't know that consistency was important. I think, I think what I wish I knew as an artist was just more about how the business actually works. You know what I'm saying? Because I just do. I just do what I do. Like, I was kind of, I knew more about like the full ins and outs of everything. Because then I could just, Figure shit out myself. And I could figure shit out myself, like it's, but I have to find people that are going to teach me. All right. So I wish that I knew a bit more about how shit worked. We said the ins and outs. Like, what do you mean more about the ins and outs? Just like the whole machine, the business in of itself. Like, why? It's why I love, love why Spotify pays like. Point three cents on the on the on the nickel. Like, why is this? Why why do why why do things tick or work the way they work? Well, the reason why the companies like Spotify and SoundCloud and Apple pay the way they do is because they're going off of a pool of music. You feel me? So it's like, say we have a hundred artists who are all mass producing stuff. So we have 10,000 products. All together, these 10,000 products have amassed $5 million. But out of these 100 producers, these 10 drove home the majority of the viewers. You feel me? So we're going to incentivize them more because they're the ones bringing in the people. This is the total pot that all 100 of you got. But these 5, 10 people brought in over 50% of the pot themselves. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, if you look at my streaming numbers versus Drake's streaming numbers, exponentially 100 times, you feel me? Right. So it's only right that he gets the bigger part, you feel me? So it's like, with the way that it is, is that red dot still on here? Yeah. So it's just like with the way that it is, when it comes to breaking it down, the math is is just kind of weird. It's off because it's like, I did bring people in and I did get money. But it's like the percentage of people I brought in versus the percentage of people he brought in. It's no comparison. Right. So the percentage of the overall pie that he gets, I don't even taste it. Yeah. You feel me? And so it's like, who chose that method is the question. Why it works that way is because this is the formula that they decided right. works. You True. feel me? And like when it comes to like numbers for album sales, so many streams will take the place of an actual album sale. Because back in the day, 
you sold your album for ten dollars so they could register all right this person bought that album it's ten dollars now they take into the effect that all right if you get x amount of streams it equals x amount of dollars so say a thousand streams equals five dollars we're going to divide that five dollars by a thousand and that's how much each one of these streams are if your album costs ten dollars multiply this four cents per stream by however much it takes for ten dollars and that's how many sales you got it's just the numbers don't really mean anything because they're so minuscule in compared in comparison to the overall pool and the overall pot. There's so many numbers, there's so many artists, there's so many songs. Your song got this many plays, which doesn't equal shit and how many plays were gotten, period. Yeah. A billion five streams were had. Yeah. You streamed a thousand. All right. We all get this shit to the nigga who streamed five million. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your thousand would have equal this much money if too bad. Like, yeah. Oh, it's just a bad way of dividing the pool, period. Because nobody has to pay for your song. They just have to pay for access to your song. So instead of paying you, I'm going to pay the nigga who gave me access. And the amount that I pay them is, is like $10 a month for a subscription. So let me ask you this question. Then do you feel, because there are platforms that like, have the buy straight from the buy straight. I like that. Can even, you know, do you think that artists so gravitate towards those? Gravitate more towards those. Not so much just cut streaming out because it's a good way to build a fan. Of course, you your own. But like, gravitate more towards that and utilize them more. And so I would say that for any smart artist and myself included, I definitely should utilize those more. But when those actually help is when you're getting a following, when you're growing your following, because it has to be people who know about your website or whatever site that you're taking them to that is third party to their streaming sites. Most people are Spotify or Apple Music these days when it comes to getting new music. That's and right. so it's like, when you have your music available for download, why am I going to download it? You feel me? Because if I'm on my iPhone and I download your song, it's going to go to my files. And right. I got to know how to navigate to my files and open it. You oh. feel me? Oh. So it's like, with Apple users, I want that shit to be in my iTunes and my Apple Music. In order for me to do that, I go to Apple Music and just buy it. For Android, it's like, it's possible. I'm going to just say this. I don't know too many people who are downloading stuff to their files and then saving it into the actual apps on their phone. And I'll say this as somebody who does it as of like 2012. You feel me? People did not know what I was doing, bro. Like, I've been having all the music for free before streaming. Like, before Spotify was, like, regularly in people's phones, I was on my Android, bro, using it like a computer, downloading RAR files. Like, you feel me? Like, I wasn't even downloading MP3s. I was downloading locked files that I had to register somewhere else to actually get the data and then adding them to my playlist. And people was like, I don't know how to do that. And so it was like, yeah, me still. You feel me? So it was like when you were offering these free downloads to people, a lot of people are looking at stuff on their phones and they're looking at new music on their phones. So it's a great idea. Do it 100%. See who you can get. But, but to tell an artist that that's what they should do, it's like, I can't tell you that unless you're already getting a thousand hits, 5,000, 10,000 hits on your Spotify and your Apple Music because people are looking for you. As an upcoming artist, it'd be great to do. So if you have that consistency and you're posting every week, every month, people will gravitate to you as they grow with you and you're releasing. Cool. If you're somebody who's already been le releasing for like a year or two and you gained 100, 200 couple people who are like checking you, they might not be consistent followers. I don't think it's going to work in your favor because you're going to take them away from what they're already knowing. They didn't come to you because of you. They came to you because they like you, and then you're on a platform they know. 
Now you're telling them to go somewhere else to get your shit. You got to be somebody they're already interested in looking at. And this could be me being like a pessimistic view, but I think I'm just kind of being a realist on it where it's like, I know people who I even fuck with and who fuck with my music who will go listen to it on Spotify and Apple Music. If they had to figure out how to download it and then play it and they're not on a computer, it's a, it's a wrap. Yeah. I clicked the link, it started downloading, and I didn't see where the download went. I didn't know how to get to it. I haven't heard it yet. I paid for it and I downloaded it, but I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> you right. feel me? Right. Then I gotta hit that little asterisk, I gotta go to the files, and then I gotta open it. And then once I close that player, it stopped. And I didn't even know it was in the files. I just clicked that thing and took them to it. Like, both ways. And it's partially just because I know how I am and I've been on shit. And I just had to realize that not everybody is trying to figure this shit out. They just get tired. Yeah. 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 But at the same time, when it comes to being an independent artist who's selling your shit directly to people and seeing the money come straight in directly without having to divvy it up and wait for a check, beautiful. It's beautiful. You set oh, it up yeah. and you control it. Like, that's the main thing that artists are fighting for is control. Ever since he been Prince, bro, it was like, that's why he became a symbol because he wanted control over what he was doing and what he was putting out without having to fight for how much of it he should get. And so with selling Bandcamp, you're setting that direct platform. Having a website with download links, you're setting that direct platform. Yeah. Huh. It, Cause like I know personally for me the next the next full length project I do it's getting released on like Bandcamp or even first. That way if you want to pour in and I'm like So the people who are already paying attention. Yeah, I will see it first. Pour in. Yeah. Go ahead. Pay what you owe, pay what you want for it. Yeah. Like I'm gonna get like and I think that's smart. Someone took from the Russell. Yeah. Well, the rest of it was like, pay what you want for it. And then the motherfuckers like, look. I think he just dropped it out. This man done dropped like 62 albums by now. But like, for <laughs> he, real. He consistent. For real. He, he very much is. But the rest of dropped an album. And so I paid for it. They then went back and sent him a cash app. They sent him a cash app paid it because... They felt like they underpaid. Oh. I just realized I had that in the wrong bottle. It's supposed to be in this little server this whole time. Hey, Amen. And I done poured that boy way too full. But nah, I've been looking at Lil Russell and just trying to like peep game, bro, because like, which is the way he drops content. One of the biggest things I took away from him recently, because I can't even say biggest things, so I've been watching him for over two years at this point, bro. bro. But one of the biggest things I took away from him recently is shooting videos and yeah. video content, where he was like, bro, I want to shoot a music video. And instead of like breaking my neck and breaking the bank to go get this elaborate video shot, what I started doing is treating it the same as if I were going to get a whole video elaborate shit shot, but I'll write out my storyboard and my treatment and I'll look at it and I'll say which one of these shots best encompasses the feel, theme, and vibe of this video. And as opposed to waiting until I have the whole cast for these three, four, five scenes, the location and the budget, I'm going to shoot the scene that best encompasses what I'm going for and put that out as content. Yeah. I was like, that's so smart. Cause like, we're only showing the But yeah, one of the latest, latest things I took from him was just the idea of like creating a whole storyboard, a whole vision plan for a video, and then shooting the one scene that encompasses the, like the most of that vibe of that song. And it's just so smart because, like, realistically, again, like I said, we're on our phones. Yeah. And when you're on your phone, you're not looking for an hour-long video. You're not looking for a whole music video. But you are watching 15 seconds, 30 seconds worth of content, a minute's worth of content. And so he was like, 
if I shoot this whole scene for this song, I now have at least four or five pieces of content for the song. And people will look at that 30 seconds and go to the song. Why am I shooting a whole music video? I want to showcase the song, not visuals. Oh. It was like, I have a whole visual where if you want to watch for a whole two minutes of the whole song, here's a scene. We did this scene in three different shots as opposed to shooting five different scenes with different actors, different locations, different lighting. Fuck all that. It's more time and more money. We're going to shoot this one scene from three different shots and that's the whole video. I thought that was really smart. Well, let's say Toby does that, but doesn't. Hmm? Toby. Toby Weaver. He, but he does his whole videos like that, just period. But I think his is more like the crew is paid for. Like, production crew. And his squad, like the Black Angels, them, Fat, the kids. Can't even hear them. I think, I think, like, I think, oh, what was I just about to say? I think, um, damn, I lost my train of thought. I hate that. I just want to try to go bad. Bad, too. Damn. Like, way off. Damn. Damn. It's not stopping. No, it's... That's not right. But honestly, I poured that shit in that bottle. I was like, do I even want to pour another shot? I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. But I can tell you right now. And I was saying, this shit's only 16%, bro. It's only 16 16%. Yeah, it's enough. It is. That's what I'm saying, me and the homie, bro. So the bottles we killed at dinner were more closely to that size. But like, we killed both of them. It's no time. But we were just sitting there. Ah, I don't know. You feel me? Like, chatting, chatting, bro. Like, a nigga looked at how much he was talking and was like, what's wrong with me? Like, I'm over here laughing out my like This shit. But and I'm like, what is that, bro? You feel me? Niggas drink whole bottles of whiskey. And be cool. It's like, you just gave me these two baby bottles of sake, bro. And I feel like a motor mouth. Like, <laughs> this is different. And the energy is just like, it's not heavy. It's, it's not what it high. is. It's a real light. It's not sweet. Oh, it's Walmart. It's like, yeah, it's 16, but that's 16 is about to get you fucked up. Right? But then on top of that, it's light. So it's like, this ain't shit. Exactly. Okay. Not gonna you you back. talking, you happy, the you laughing, these motherfuckers. And all of a sudden, you're just like, I'm drunk. I'm actually drunk. I didn't know this shit just didn't take me. I didn't He's taking little ass shots of water. Me for this. It don't take you hit some liquor. You'd be like, mm. yeah, you feel me? You know, you know what you're doing. So With I this, you'd be like, oh, is that juice? Look, cool. Man. Back to the conversation. Look, man. That ain't, that's the most spicy water. Exactly. Spicy water. A little flavor. Yeah. Knocking that bitch, knocking them bitches back. See, I had to grab the, grab the coffee. Look. I already knew I needed it. I forgot. I was getting everything situated. I forgot that was, I was on the phone with my dad. I was like, I'm about to go home and make a cup of coffee. He's a coffee. Yeah. I was like, nigga, yes. Like. Look, man, I'm definitely, I, I was going to grab me a Red Bull anyway. Because I like, look. Corona, here's a problem. How far? 58 miles. Dang, G. Nah, like, uh, look, feel free to crash out for as long as you need. I'll be completely honest with you. Like, the AIA events, when, like, Racina. That fucking like last night in this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's 15 minutes away from here. Dog, that was 60 miles. <laughs> that was six days to the end? Yes. I didn't get home until three. Yeah, bro. But I was I did to woke up at seven. Where events like that, bro. Events like that, G. Once they start hitting past the 12 a.m., I'll be like, look. I love it, 
I love the artistry, I love the connections, but I also feel like Drake. I love my, my bed. bed. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> I love my bed. Hey, man. It's like, bro, that's another thing about just getting older, bro. I used to not care. As long as I wasn't sleepy in the moment, like nodding, we good. We good. We good. I got what? Four hours before I got a touch? I could be up for four and a half hours before I'm expected in the place? We good. I be like, bro, I need at least five hours of sleep before I got to be there. And right now, I'm at about the seven and a half hour mark if we need now. And I would probably want to chill for an hour before I go to sleep. Wrap them up. <laughs> Wrap them up. <laughs> Bro, I've left events I was supposed to perform at. Did ask. That's wild. Yes. They got about 20 more minutes. If I ain't on that stage by 12, 30, I'm out. See y'all on another one. And that's what they know is like, also just got to come in, like being an artist, bro. People don't understand the time aspect. You feel me? Where it's like, oh, every performance, you should be there. And it's like, bro, first you want me to make the song, which we just went over. I got to pay the studio. It's three hours. Yeah. If you just pay fifty dollars an hour, that's one fifty. Good. I got about a B. If you working with a producer who's not just up and coming, I want to do this. You're not paying less than five hundred. You feel me? And I'm gonna be the actually own it. That's a lease. <laughs> that's a lease. So we already seven hundred dollars in. Which I don't understand the concept of that. And this is what happened, bro. It's the way the music industry started going before that shit didn't exist. How the fuck do you lease a beat? Because you could sell so many. It's like when people sell them physical copies and mixtapes and stuff. And then also with streams, bro. Whereas like with streams, you could have 10,000 streams. And it's like even if it's a platform, it's like, bro, even if I gave you a lease with a million rights. Once you make a million streams on one platform, you just now are going to start seeing some bands. Like more than a couple hundred dollars. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to let you get your leeway. Once you start making money, we need to split that lease. Why am I going to charge you a thousand, five thousand? Well, you didn't even make five hundred yet. So my question is, why don't I just? Why don't, oh, I get it. Okay, 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 okay. You feel me? Is like I'm not going to charge you. If you just hit them with the well, you can charge them up front, which that's one thing. But then you're limiting or, yourself, or you can hit them with the split off the end, and just be like, or hit them with the split in the middle, and be like, okay, no, it makes this much. Kick this back to me. And even then, that's the lease aspect. Whereas, like, I still own it. And it's also with the way that music is now. I gotta be able to see this dot so I know we still good. And it's also with just, like, the way music is now. Whereas, like, the access. Like you said, you made your project off your phone. You feel me? Cool. And so it's like, for a producer, I can be giving this product to a bunch of different people who can be using it right now. True. As opposed to back in the day, is like just to even be able to have a product and be able to put it in market, meet you were on a certain level, which meant you had money in a budget. Whereas like anybody can buy this now. And so it's like, why limit myself on getting paid when somebody who has the actual potential to give me what I think it's worth will pay me? I can sell this shit to a hundred people who have nothing going for them and are all willing to give me fifty dollars. So as opposed to charging five thousand dollars to one person. I just charge all these motherfuckers and I make the same money. Or if you're somebody who's nice and you know people, I got placements with Rick Ross, Jay Z, Lil Wayne, and I got over 5,000 beats in my arsenal. I'm going to keep the heat and keep it exclusive and sell it for five racks. But I'm going to go make this little free website, put my credentials on there. I got heat. $100? $50? If I sell this beat for $20 and that 20 people buy it, that's way better than trying to solicit this one beat for $500 and nobody wants it. Fair. And that's where, from a producer's aspect, I say every producer should have a beat store. Every producer should have a beat store. Every producer should have a beat store. Even if you only put the beats you don't like on there. 
because somebody might like it and pay you $50. Somebody might like it and pay you $50 and then only come to your store. There's people who I bought beats from who I haven't bought shit in the last 10 years. But when I'm in that mode, I go back and see what they dropped in the last month because I might buy something. You right. never know who's willing to give you money on a beat store. Right. Uh, that makes sense. Hurt. That makes sense. But in the actual terms of like, why are we buying leases? <laughs> that, that was something I was like, why is it? Like, it's I because it makes sense from the money perspective for the I would, producers. I would, I would understand why if you were going to, if you had a product and you pay somebody to make a video about the product and then they lease the, the video about the product to you, well, they did all the work. You just had the product. I can see that. Like when it comes to music, it's like that's a little bit of all game. So, and it's just like at the same time, like yes, you made it a product, but it, the the beat was a product in itself. True. You feel me? So it's like I'm just letting multiple people use my product, and you think your song is the product, but your song hasn't outshone my beat because fifty people have downloaded this beat to make music. How many people have downloaded your song for something? Do you feel me? Whereas, like, people who download the song Birthday Sex for their birthday. You feel me? Like, random example. But it's like, how many people downloaded your song for something to serve a purpose? My instrumental served a purpose on all 10 of you, 50 of you song. Pay me. And so I get it. It is just like, the question is, we're both artists and we're both looking for the same thing. We're both looking for that one. We're both looking for it money monetarily increase from our music so it's like if i didn't make a dollar yet and you ain't make a dollar yet why are we fighting each other for something that don't exist yep but at the same time if you approach it as this is my business and that's your business it makes sense for me personally i haven't bought a beat bro since like 2018, 19, I won't. That's a lie. I'm lying. I'm lying. Uh, I'm lying. I'm lying. That's a lie. I have bought a couple of beats. And what it was is do had a buy one, get one offer. And it was like buy two, get three or buy three, get two or some shit where I bought a whole bunch of beats for one price. And that's the last time I bought beats. Usually what I'll do is I'll just work out a partnership and a deal with the producer. And I'll just show them like what I'm working with, what I've done, and what my trajectory and plan is. And I'll just say, we can do a 50-50 split. We'll sign the contract, dot everything, say, you own your beat, I own my lyrics. You're the producer, you feel me? You keep your publishing, I keep mine. This is a 50-50 partnership and our deal whatever is made will split down the middle you feel me and so for me for the most part i've had probably like a 70 percent success rate with still getting able to have access to the production and not have to bust it out of pocket right a couple of producers would be like this is what i'm selling it for and this is what i want but for the most part they'll be like i hear what you're saying i like your music i know what you're doing and I'm with it. Send me the contract. You feel me? And both ways, I'm never mad because it's like, this is the product that I put out for sale. When I drop a song, I want that to sell a million copies. Just because it didn't doesn't mean I'm going to be mad at the next minute. So when the producers are like, look, bro, I made this beat because I wanted to sell it for this much money. If you're not going to give me the money, then what are we talking about? I can't be mad at them for that because I wish I could tell people like, look, if you're not going to buy the song, I'm not putting music out. Yeah. It don't work like that. Yeah. So I just go with the producers who said, I get it. I'm trying to do the same thing as you. Let's build together. It's been working. That's the beauty of like finding that team and finding that tribe and finding that, that, that network of people that like really want to see you succeed. Yeah. And fire question. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's a beauty thing. 100%. Uh, all right. So, this is an episode.
We done about killed this bottle of sake. And we going to sign off. Thank you all for tuning in to Sake Sundays. It's your boy Chuck D's with the Long Wolf. And I am Willie J the Artist. Find me on TikTok and Instagram at Willie J the Artist. That's W-I-L-L-I-E. J, just the letter J. T-H-E. Artist. Blade him. Peace.